Remember what I said about being screwed out of Europe in my Burnley stream save by teams below 6th position in the Premier League getting both the FA Cup and a European final? I double-checked the Euro Cup. I forgot to check the Euro Cup too. Thankfully, Tottenham won the FA Cup as well. We're still in Europe. Everything's fine. I'll see you after the intro for all of the transfers. It might take a while. We'll start with the outs for money. A uh, few people went on free transfers at the end of the year that you kind of already knew about. Those Borgias went to America. Hugh King's gone to Scotland and a Paraguay who saw a couple of times he was a future transfer prospect that never really developed. He's gone to the club I think we got Ben Squires from, weirdly enough. Anyway, the first person gone for money is Jesse Jeronan. Had a year left on his contract. Despite being homegrown nation, did not count as an English player because that's how the, this works with the foreign player quota. So... I've traded him, basically. Not a direct trade with Chelsea as such, but I've brought in an, an actual English backup and I've sold Jiron and on. You can see the English backup on the right-hand side. We'll get to him eventually. £190,000 for a player who was in the last year of his contract. It, it's a shame because he was a solid backup, really, but not as good as the one we've got now, technically. And sort of just basically a case of having too many players in a position at this point. Simon Carter's gone to Portsmouth for £300,000. Uh, same situation with Alex Oxley chamberlain who... Just deteriorated far too fast. We've sold him for 2.3 million. Got him on a free, of course, so that's money. And then the only real major one is Christian Best has gone to SV Verda. He came to me wanting another new contract, and I just wasn't having it, basically. And I was never super convinced by him as a whole. He was one of the lower-rated players at the end of last year, and, you know, tackling 14 is great, but the rest of his defensive stats are a bit iffy, and his going-forward ability, not good. We've covered that position, though. There's also a whole bunch of loans. Players like South and Robertson have gone out on loan, along with both of the last two youth intakes' best players. They've gone on loan lower down the league structure as well. Ruben van Gastel has gone on loan to Groningen, just because I figured he could do with a little bit more starting time, perhaps, if he's ever going to develop anything at any point. And I figured the right-hand side was probably the one that was best covered by other players slipping into that position, if necessary. So Ruben van Gastel has gone on loan. However, now for the ins. And I think I'm going to try and do these in terms of importance to the team. Oh, Nick Tay's gone alone as well. Which is why we've brought in an under-21 English player who does not require any registration whatsoever. Just a solid backup. He has a very strong left foot, which means he can cover that inverted winger if I so desire. It's part of the reason why I decided to actually go ahead with this one. I was on the fence about this one. It wasn't really worth it as such because we had enough strikers. But I figured you don't need to actually register him, so it should be fine. And the other loan signing that we've done this year is Lewis Foreman's back. I decided to get him back just on his wages. Nothing extra this time. They wanted an extra bit, but I just said nothing extra thanks, and they accepted it. So that's all good. Foreman's back. We know how good he is. Didn't really score an awful amount while he was with us last year, but he did have a decentish rating. Enough for me to decide to get him back again. Of course, strength and depth we kind of need at this point. And then the one future signing in, in the striking position that I actually made a long while ago, actually, and has uh, has developed. He's on £220 a week at this stage. That might change because, yes, he's he's probably the best one of the future transfers in terms of development before he's got here. Welcome. I'm going to presume it's pronounced Alor Silva. But he's at a championship level before he even got here. And, yeah, I think he might be a great option off the bench, third choice, maybe in Europe, depending on who we draw. I suspect we're going to be bottom seed. That's going to be interesting, whenever that draw is. Now I actually get to the point where I'm showing you the English player that I got on a free transfer at the end of the year. It's Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He was at Olympiacos for some strange reason. He's essentially filling the role that Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain was in, in being very much a backup English player in the midfield. Bit of bit of age, bit of experience, of course. Spent a lot of time at Chelsea, Southampton, never turned on his resume in this game as well, so... He knows this division, possibly knows Europe a little bit as well. Nice to have him around. Also, notably more physically fit than Alex was. Now we get to another one of those future transfers I did a couple of years ago. And this one's done all right as well, I would say. Rick. I was looking forward to the potential of having a Rick and Edgar backline. But of course, we're a lot further on by this point than I was expecting to be. And Edgar's gone. But <laughs> Rick, I love it. He's just decent in the defensive stuff at this point. Good mentals for an 18-year-old, let's face it, actually. And decent enough physicals, too. Good strength, particularly for a South American. Jumper reaches pretty good, 191 centimetres. Argues with the officials, okay. But he is a ball-playing defender, which is something we don't really have normally. Both Coleridge and Medina are just better, just normal central defenders. So, ball-playing, nice option. And speaking of backups, as well as Timothy Pembele, signed for actual money, a few million from Lens. It wasn't a massive signing. It was sort of one of those 
ones where I figured, despite the fact we've got a couple of new faces in on future transfers that are finally activated, I could do with another one just to cover the losses of Edgar and Borges and what have you. And of course, we haven't re-signed uh, Littler this year as another backup. So we've got five defenders again. Timothy Pemberley is one of them. Just good in all the actual defensive stats and 19 fitness as well. So what physicals he has probably will hang around for a long time. He's only 24, though. I'm saying that as if he's 30. Mental's not super, but again, he's just an option. Weirdly, not good at any actual defensive position, despite being an actual defender. I don't understand this bit. Uh, speaking of the other one, I uh, should mention that Rick was about a million up front with future extras, obviously a long time ago. Agueso was actually four million up front with a little bit extra as well. Slightly better in the technicals, I would argue, than Rick is up front, but worse in the physicals, and about the same, possibly slightly worse in mentals. He is fifth for a reason. But he does have 15 tackling off the bat. They're not too far apart at this point. But if, you know, they they develop, then there's possibilities for eclipsing Medina in the long run. Perhaps I think both of these guys have potential abilities way beyond Medina. They may get past him at some point. I'm not sure if they'll ever challenge Coleridge, but that's fine. And again, sort of ball playing-ish. He's not as good as Rick is in the sort of passing technique department. But in terms of comfort comfortability, he can do it. And a fairly strong left foot as well. So back up for the left-hand side, Rick's more back up for the right-hand side. Joe Lumley's come in from Crystal Palace on this, uh, starts, a, starts a QPR on the game. He's half a star behind Dutra, who I really feel like, star rating-wise, he's somewhat done by. But yeah, very solid in general. Eccentricity slap down the middle, punching slightly under, rushing out tendency slap down the middle as well. Seems dependable, back up. Good, good player for championship size, works fine for me as a solid backup. Reasonable wages... For a backup in the long run, he is here on a three-year contract, so I suspect due to his contract will get boosted at some point again further down the line. It's quite high, I suppose, in terms of the general squad, but in the long run, that's a sensible backup goalkeeper wage. I'm actually going to go to my most expensive signing next, and that is Christian Bess's replacement. Now, I didn't get them again. We're in a position where I haven't actually got another left back. I'm essentially going to be relying on Shao, Coleridge, Laird, Medina covering that left-hand side when Saxon is not available. It's a bit awkward, but there's just no one there. There's, you, there's no one... Because I, I would need a young English player that I wouldn't need to register. Although I think I actually now technically have a gap. But yeah, I'd probably need a young English under-21 player to go in there. Like Saxton, I'd actually need to register him, which is helpful, to be his cover. And there just wasn't one. There just wasn't one that was even, frankly, on Coleridge or Laird's level. As a backup, it just wasn't there. So defensively, I'm not super overawed by Saxton. I am liking the fact that he has room to grow. It was a very weird transfer, this Saxton one. His value was about mid to late teens. But Man United naturally wanted a lot more than that. Um, it ended up being 40 million. Not all of it up front. And then there's extra if things trigger, you know. But that was the wage demands he had when he came in. He was only on £1,000 a week less at Man United. By initially trying to do a transfer, which was rejected, I unsettled him at Man United, then went on the transfer list by request, and that's how I ended up with him. But I think he's quite good. Uh, mental's very good, physical's very good. Heading 16, which is great for a left-back. His jumping reach, very low. His heading, quite high, which I like for a left-back, because they're notoriously bad at heading it towards the opponents. Going forward, though, has what best didn't. And of course, if he's got development room, then both of these ends may go a little bit further. Under-21 player as well. I did notice that when I was on his page before, one of his dynamics at Man United was... Pleased that James Grimes is under 21's captain now. I found, out some, I found out something about my own team by this transfer. And now the last one. Now you may be wondering, if Saxton is my most expensive transfer, how on earth have I got him for less? The answer to that is a 25 million release clause. So from Flamengo is Ivan Seri. He's on £90,000 a week. It's a lot of money. But when I was presented with this sea of yellow, I figured, well, there's not really a way... I'm going to say no to a player like this. This is the player that's going to set the standard going forward. I say that. Grimes is technically ahead of him on the list. That's fine. We'll deal with that. But my favourite part of this, of course, he does do Mazala quite nicely, which means he does take over that role from Velasquez. Unfortunately, on Velasquez's front, he will be my Mazala. I may, I may swap those two positions around in midfield in terms of which side they're on, just because Ivan Seri doesn't have a left foot at all. And the only reason he wasn't on the left in the first place is because Velasquez has a very strong left foot. The good news is Velasquez is inside forward ability on that right hand side as a backer to Ebers back. It was actually better than Van Gastelth, which I never realised. So he's going to play back up to Ebers back and Ivan Seri in that Mazala role from now on. Two birds, one stone on my bench. It's great news. But welcome, Ivan Seri. He's worth 37.5 million off the bat. Just 25 million, nothing else. Also, look at that assist record. 
12 assists in 18 games before I interrupted their season. I love the fact that they bought him for 35 and then put in a 25 million release clause to foreign clubs. Solid working that one out there. Well done, Flamengo. So we actually have the Friday night game here, which we're going to play right now. You may be wondering, last year we were 1,000 to 1 to win the league. How have those transfers affected our position this year in the season preview? The answer is dramatically. Wolves have been re-promoted to 40 to 1 again. It's a little awkward, that one. Yeah, we're 50 to 1. Also, by the way, Huddersfield got a promoted as well. So now we have all three Yorkshire clubs in the top division. Well, all three of the West Yorkshire clubs in the top division. I'm not sure if York technically count as West Yorkshire. I'm not sure where the divides are. Also, annoyingly, we're still behind them in the reputation list. So we've not got that one yet, despite finishing in European spaces. So goal number one is actually not happened before goal number two, which would, would have been European football. Goal number one was become the most reputable club in Yorkshire. Also Sheffield as well, of course. So shout out to my squad. And going into this match, we're favourites already. That's not happened for a while. What that means is our lineup is as follows. Saxton on the left is just as good as complete wing-back as normal wing-back in terms of his comfortability in the role, which is good news. Courage and Medina and Shao on the right. The rest of that course are unchanged. Dutch is still in goal. Few people got new contracts, by the way. The ones you'd expect. So Shao got a new one and Madeira got a new one. Just to reflect their new ability and what have you and to ward off any potential suitors, because people did come in for both of them. Neither of them were interested in leaving. Dutra, by the way, keeps getting offers from mostly the Bundesliga, and he has no interest in signing with any of them, which is lovely to hear on my part. Lentas is in the Yankerman role. He's still going to stay there for the time being. It's one of those positions that I may consider changing in the future, because, of course, we do have... I think Barwick is fine there, should he develop in time. And, of course, there'll be an English player to go in that role, which will free up foreign spots elsewhere. It's a little bit awkward having two foreign players in the same role, but we'll persevere for the time being, of course. Grimes and Seri ahead of them in those two positions we decided. Um, in case people care about numbers, Seri wanted the number eight, which means Grimes took Nacelle's number seven. He's still here. He's in the under-23s. He wasn't happy about not being in the Premier League squad. But he's happy to stay at York after Madeira had a word with him, so sorry, Nacelle. Madeira and Ebers back in the inside forward roles. They haven't changed, and Foreman will start just by virtue of being the better player on paper. We'll see who actually commands that position for a long time. There were people on international duty up until yesterday. I can only assume one of them was Agueso because he's knackered. No idea who the other one was. By the way, I'm just going to take this opportunity to just plug my experiment video from the weekend. If you've not watched it, do go check it out. It's called One Club Per City and it does what it says on the tin, really. I merge all clubs that are in the same city into one club and then simulate from there and find out what happens. Only in England. It took me long enough just to do that one. Part one was Saturday, part two was Sunday, and then three and four will come next weekend. Their team doesn't appear to have changed all that much from last time we've seen it. One bit of transfer news for people who have been paying, attra uh, paying attention. Uh, Sacramento has gone for Brighton. You will see him at some point. Annoyingly, for amount of money, nowhere near what they demanded of me last year when I tried to sign him. But then I'm glad that didn't pan out because Madeira... Madeira, who obviously continued in the position that Sacramento would have been signed into, excelled out of nowhere. So, <laughs> worked out in the end. He was sold to Brian for sub-20 million, and they were demanding like 40 million from me last year. I'm very angry at that, but simultaneously pleased. Now, Seri on a free kick. I haven't changed anything up there. That's a bit awkward. Probably should have had a look at the set pieces. I will make sure I do them afterwards. Hepper's back on the resulting corner. I don't think this will come to anything because it came from that free kick, free kick initially. And no, Formas just tackled someone. First person to get booked, I think. Yep, is the striker. As back, we'll run on to this ball here. He's got it on the byline and he's been dispossessed by Bernasconi. Grimes gets his head on that ball. That was a weird cross-field ball that deep in their half. Michelle now gathers his on the far side. No one near him. Crosses it in. Madeira's there. It's 1-0. That's an assist to a goal scorer that we've seen time and time again in the past year. Our two best of the club players, I should say. The two players that have been with us and developed into fantastic players. Shaunan to Real Madeira. Oh, what it wonderful it is to see these two, despite obviously new people coming in, possibly stealing a bit of their limelight. It's good to see these two who have been with us for years, still connecting in that way. Oh, Shao, by the way, has gained a new trait. He will get forward whenever possible now. That's a natural trait, so you'll see, you'll see him bombing up that right side probably even more. I was slightly worried there, Foreman had just committed a foul. But we're fine, we've got away with it. Madeira, Grimes, back to Madeira, on that left-hand side. Swings it in, Foreman's there, he's headed it over. After nearly getting sent off there, potentially. Well, first half gone by, not a super amount of highlights, but we do have the better of it. I, I did do a byline shout before the halftime came in. Didn't go well. Just 
Just going to back that up with some faith. There we are. Lovely. Most people care about that. Four months, sorry. Two, well, one and a half new faces. Didn't really care. This second half disappearing. Ah, nope, never mind. Shao Nan's got a throw in. Foreman gets his head on it, gives it on to... No, he doesn't really, but Seri has ended up on the ball. He's got it worked it. That was a weird assist, but we've scored, so I won't complain. Seri, in all the space just to smash it in himself, decides to give it to Foreman. Just watch this in 3D and just see how Seri had probably the one of the better chances he's ever going to have to score a goal himself. Ah, no. I see what's happened here. He did have a shot. It's ricocheted off the defender into Foreman's path. Never mind, Seri. That wasn't a weird assist, but it's counted as one. Cosa has given that to Lerma. Haven't seen him since he was at Leeds. Cotterell's charging forward for them. He's still charging forward. He's put through a Raujo. Uh, that's somehow deflected back into his own path. And then Sergio has made a lovely save. So it was nearly bizarre deflections won all there as they head over from the resulting corner. 6.5 is an atrocious average rating for a team that's only 2-0 down. 15 minutes to go. Two people. Left back and Ibba's back. So we will make that change that we've talked about. Uh, Velasquez comes in here. He's not superb at it. I probably should start training him there. I'm looking at Shao. He's a little bit tired. We are 2-0 up. Welcome to the team again, Laird. Immediately booked. Thank you for your contributions. Uh, again, sort of tiredness now is just a factor for me changing people around. We'll just bring in Maxence in the midfield. He's still here. Very good. He actually rejected a contract offer from abroad. It was a fairly decent side that came in for him. Can't remember which one it was now. Someone offered about his value and I, I accepted it just because it was money in the bank from a player that we signed on a free. And I was slightly worried about finances at that point. I wasn't quite sure we, we would be able to finance the transfers that we kind of would have wanted. Oh, Jude Bellingham. That reminds me, that was partially why. Because that, at that point, it was Saxton and Jude Bellingham that w I was working on. And Surrey, not on my radar. They wanted about 40 million from him, Jude Bellingham, did Newcastle. In fact, he had a release clause of 52, but they wanted about 40 if we were going to be sensible. Uh, Southampton, I think, did actually go for it and going for about 37. Nobody gave us a chance except the bookies. Can we please stop this? Can we please stop this nonsense? We're 50 to 1 to win the league and we're in the Euro Europa League. Bournemouth are 700 to 1. That's 14 times as much. How did nobody give us a chance apart from the bookies? Can we stop this nonsense, football manager? So we did well. And the very least, Saxton wasn't worse than Christian Best. Also, of course, the foreign player quota was a slight consideration in selling Best as well. But he was already on a contract of £17,000 a week. You saw what he was on at his new club, which was 51000 I think. I was not prepared to pay that kind of money to someone like Christian Best. Shall, maybe. Christian, not quite the same quality. So we have our group draw just before we play Man United away. Of course, two of our players have come from there. Of course, I want to bring you the first European group stage game, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to bring you it with. I'll record the draw before the Man United game. I probably won't play it. I may end up, depending on what the Carabao Cup third round draw is, may bring you that. I may bring you Southampton. I may bring you Stoke just because sod it. I'm not entirely certain we did Southampton in an episode in last season, so that might be the best option at this stage, just to provide, just to prevent you being oversaturated with Stoke games in recent times. So it's as much a mystery to you as it is to me. Until then, ta-ra. 25 million. What a bargain.